Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be evaluating an infinite series or an infinite sum. We have 1 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 75 plus 1 over 500 so on and so forth and we're going to be adding this infinite sum. Can we find the finite answer? That is a question of convergence but let me just tell you this expression is going to converge. I'm also going to show you a result from Wolfram Alpha at this point, start thinking about whether Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem as is. If I enter this as a prompt, do you think it's going to give us a definite answer? All right. If you're ready, we can go ahead and get started. So to be able to find a sum like this, first of all, I need to identify the pattern. And sometimes you probably notice in my other videos that are like this, I share with you the results such as Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand your query because it can't determine the general term. And it's not always easy. Obviously, you can write a lot of different series that have the first few terms, the same first few terms, but uh, without knowing the general term, you're not going to be able to tell for sure. But we're going to do our best and I will show you what I mean and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so first of all, most of the time with these kinds of series that are kind of uh, maybe child processes of uh, infinite geometric series, series like these, uh, they usually start with one. And I like that because I don't want to start with a fraction. I like to start with one. It's kind of fun. Okay, one is fun, right? So let's take a look at the numbers that are different from one. For example, one over 10. What is uh, significant about 10 that makes this... Uh, pattern. So you can think of 10 as 2 times 5 or 1 times 10. 1 times 10 is not that interesting. Along the same lines, can you identify something similar for 75? And I'm thinking about 3 times 25. Hmm, that makes sense. Why? Because uh, 3 comes after 2 and 25 is the 5 to the second power. Can we apply the same logic to the third term or the fourth term, I mean? it will be 4 times 125. Beautiful. So you can kind of guesstimate the next term, which is going to be 5 times 625, which is 3,125. But I didn't write it because that would be too many terms. Maybe it would give it away quickly. But anyways, you get the idea. So what am I doing here? Well, here's the thing. You have a 2 and a 5 at the bottom, but we need to separate this into two pieces like this. 1 over 2 times 5 can be written as 1 over 2, divided by 5. Make sense? And then we can kind of write this as maybe 1 over 3 divided by 25. But notice that the denominators are kind of different. They don't look good. I want them to look consecutive numbers. Hmm, what is that supposed to mean? I mean, switch to 2 and the 5. So let's go ahead and write it this way. Why don't we write 1 over 2 times 5 as 1 over 5 divided by 2, and then this one as 1 over 25 divided by 3, and then this one as 1 over 125 divided by 4, and so on and so forth. You get the pattern? The general term, along with 1, by the way, you can write this as 1 over 5 to the power 0 divided by 1, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. Make sense? So all the terms fit the pattern, but what is the pattern? That is the million dollar question. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that in this video, okay? Then we're going to try to get there. I'll show you how to get there real quick from a well-known series. And we're also going to check the result from Wolfram Alpha because remember I told you, I posed the question, do you think Wolfram Alpha can handle this problem? Okay, make a guess and we'll check it out. So here's how it works. These are my common ratios. Let me circle them so you can see. This is my common ratio and then I square it and then I cube it, so on and so forth. In other words, this is basically, if I call this x, if 1 over 5 is equal to x, by the way, this is kind of weird because we're calling a number variable, which is fine, then 1 over 25 becomes x squared, and of course, 1 over 125 becomes x cubed, right? Cool. Now take a look at this, replace these with the variables, and leave the 1 alone, that's perfectly fine. 1 plus x divided by 2, plus x squared divided by 3, plus x cubed divided by 4, so on and so forth. You get the pattern? So we have a power of x, divided by some number, which is 
1 more than the power of x. Make sense? In other words, the general term is x to the power n divided by n plus 1. And of course, you can kind of use sigma to express this from n equals 0 to infinity. You have to start at 0 because the first term is 1. Make sense? Easy, right? And once you use that format, of course, if you prompt Wolfram Alpha with this, it should give you an answer. If you can't, too bad, right? Well, by the way, I sometimes refer to Wolfram Alpha as AI, but it's not AI. I've been told it is a machine learning model or maybe large language model, something like that. Anyways, doesn't matter. It's still deficient somehow, but it's still good for some reason. It's a calculator, right? Sort of like Desmos, but Desmos is different. Anyways, so how do we go about finding the sum of this series, right? That's the million dollar question. Another million dollar question. So you owe me $2 million. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start. And if you look at this pattern, this should remind you something. If you've done some calculus, you should know this. If you haven't, that's okay. We're going to talk a little bit about calculus, but very tiny. Don't be scared. So I'm going to start with the well-known infinite geometric series. What is that? It is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. You hopefully know what it is. n plus x to the fourth, dot, dot, dot. And that is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Now, this series converges if, if x is between negative 1 and 1. Now, x equals 0 is okay because if x is 0, the series is 1, which is convergent, right? Obviously, everything else, everything besides 1, cancels out, so you end up with 1 over 1 minus 0. Make sense? Okay, but in general, how do we go from this to this, right? That's another question we need to answer. And the answer is actually fairly easy, by integration. Why? Because I do need x squared to divide by 3. Wait a minute, it's not going to work. It is going to work. Never mind, I checked it for you. So here's what we're going to do. Since this is an identity, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bubble and remove the convergence condition. I don't really need that. And I'm going to integrate both sides. And I'm probably going to move this a little bit to the right. So let's go ahead and make some room here so we can use the integration symbol. And here we go. I'm going to take this whole thing, integrate. Uh oh, I need more room. Let's erase this, dx. And then, of course, that is equal to this integrated dx. Now, something miraculous happens when you integrate the series term, term by term. And can you do it? Yes, you can. Because it's a polynomial. What is 1 integrated? 1 is the derivative of x. If you integrate x, x squared divided by 2, this is the rule for integration of powers. You hopefully know that because if you do, then this problem is actually fairly easy. Then, of course, there is a constant uh, c, which you should add at the end, and I'm going to add it on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, if you integrate this, you're going to get negative ln 1 minus x. And the reason why I don't use an absolute value is because x is less than 1, 1 minus x is always positive. Make sense? Well, did I say 1 minus x is positive? That is correct. Okay. And I'll, I'll talk about something else. So if you replace x with 0 on both sides... Left-hand side becomes 0 plus c. The right-hand side becomes 0. So from here, c is 0. I don't need c. Go ahead and erase it. Make sense? Okay, cool. But we still needed to check. So now, this is my series, but guess what? That's not what I'm looking for. I do need my series to start with 1 and then continue with x over 1. x over 2. That is easy. You just factor out an x, and then you'll get what you want, right? All your wishes will be granted. Not all of them, but at least some of them. Okay, great. So now we get the following from here. That's negative ln 1 minus x. And then finally, we're going to divide both sides by x. And we're going to get the answer. Beautiful. But guess what? We're going to place x with 1 over 5. That's the fun part. Let's do it. x equals 1 over 5. Since this converges, because the geometric series converges, obviously, right? And then uh, this is going to become 1 plus 1 over 5 times 1 over 2, remember, that's 1 over 10, this is 1 over 75, this is 1 over 500, exactly what I've been looking for. Now, the right-hand side is more important because that's the answer, negative ln 1 minus 1 fifth, which is 4 fifths, divided by 1 fifth. Put the 1 over 5 in the middle, I mean in, in the front, that's going to be negative 1 over 5 ln 4 over 5. But guess what? I can write it as follows. 
4 over 5 is the reciprocal of 5 over 4. Put a negative 1 power, multiply by this, you're going to get a positive term, 1 over 5 times ln 5 over 4, which is a positive answer, by the way, because 5 over 4 is greater than 1, so ln of that is going to be positive. Yay, that should be the answer. Let's go ahead and check out Wolfram Alpha. Again, do you think it can handle this? And ta-da! Yes, it can. Good job, Wolfram Alpha. You could even evaluate this sum. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.